An example of Israel's failure of leadership occurs when King Rehoboam finds himself in need of advice on a difficult matter. In 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 4, we see Jeroboam and all of Israel ask Rehoboam to lighten the harsh labor demands and the heavy taxes that his father, King Solomon, had imposed. Rehoboam begins wisely by discussing the matter with the older men who had counseled his father. In 2 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 7, the older counselors advise him to reduce the burden as the people asked, saying, if you are good to these people and do your best to please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam apparently doesn't like this answer, so he asks his younger friend's opinion. They advise him, this is what you should tell those complainers who want a lighter burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. Ray Boham decides to listen to his younger friend's advice, seemingly because it strokes his ego. He replies to Jeroboam and appoints a new taskmaster over forced labor. And the people responded by stoning this taskmaster to death and rebelling against Rehoboam, who never succeeds in ending the rebellion. So where do you go for advice? And how do you make good use of advice? Rehoboam began by asking advice from people he recognizes as spiritually mature. The elders he consults had demonstrated spiritual maturity and wisdom over many years serving King Solomon. Although they had been appointed by Solomon, they listened to Jeroboam with an open mind, resulting in their advice to overturn Solomon's policies. In contrast, Rehoboam's younger friends, they seem to only have one claim on his attention. They're his pals. Here's the deal. It's easy to ask for advice from the people who already think like you do. But do you have access to people who are spiritually mature, who can listen with an open mind and are not afraid to tell you something you'd rather not hear? Listen, when we're faced with a tough decision, seeking counsel as Rehoboam did is a great first step. And the next step is discerning which advice applies the Bible to our situation properly. We need to carefully sort through the advice, filtering it through the Word of God and the Word of God only. In Rehoboam's situation, the good advice would have required him to exercise patience, kindness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control. Had Rehoboam been willing to receive God's Spirit, this good advice would have led to peace for the whole nation. In contrast, the bad advice tempted Rehoboam to give in to his own envy, haughtiness, boastfulness, and ruthfulness, and to gratify his own ego. It's no coincidence that good advice often requires us to grow spiritually, while bad advice tempts us to give in to temptation. The best advice comes from those who can help us understand and apply God's word and encourage us to be drawn closer and closer to our wonderful counselor, Jesus Christ.